Hi, I'm Ian Winter. I'm an AmeriCorps state member serving with the United Way of Tucson in Southern Arizona. This is the second video in a series on how to set up Zendesk for the Valet Vita model as a part of our Valet Vita toolkit. So you can see these categories, and these are all of the views. We're going to delete all of these default ones in Zendesk and create some of our own that make it better for um, tax prep. So to get there, you have to go to the admin tab and then go down to manage and views. Then you see the active views all here, all of the default ones. We're going to click on all of them and deactivate them. Once that is done, we're going to start adding some of our own. This first one is going to be unopened, which is where tickets will go when they've been untouched or at least haven't been started in TaxSlayer. So we start off with ticket status is not closed, which will be the case for all views. And the next three are going to be special ones that are just here for the un unopened view. These are all going to be ticket channel, ticket channel, ticket channel. And they're all is not. And then these are going to be email, phone call incoming, and text. And then one more condition we're going to add is ticket return status is not present. So those conditions make sure that only the tickets that haven't been modified or really changed stay in the unopened area. Um, the next part we're going to do is remove these column options. These are the columns that will appear when you look at these categories. So remove submitter, we're going to remove requester, and we're also going to remove the assignee. And then the things we're going to add will be uh, needs more info first, which is down here. Then we're going to add a uh, call required because those kind of go together. We're going to add special certification in case we want to label them there. We have latest update to track how long ago a ticket was changed. And we're also going to add the site to track where the return intake was performed. So you might want to write down these columns specifically um, or write down the timestamp here because I'm going to refer you back to this section in some of the future views rather than reproducing this. The order of these options determines the order that they appear in the columns for the views. Um, and the last thing we're going to change here is going to be request date and ascending so that you're looking at the oldest tickets ever, um, not ever, oldest tickets available in the view, um, just to keep the oldest ones in mind first. So once that is created, we're going to go and create a new view, and this one is kind of represent how all the other ones look. Um, so we're going to do ticket status is not closed. And we have ticket return status is in progress. That's how all of the remaining views are going to look as far as the conditions. Um, there will be some changes in the columns, which I'll indicate um, but for this one, you can refer back to the previous section um, and or the valet toolkit on hand and see what they are. We're going to change this order by request date again, and we're going to create that view. Next, we're going to do the ready for quality review. And again, the column options are the exact same. So. This should be fast as well, at least on my end, because I'm not messing with the column options. So we have ticket status is not closed. Ticket return status 
is ready for quality review. Same column options as the previous two. I'll refer you back to that time uh, and or those options. And order by is again the same thing. This is going to get a little repetitive, so you can skip ahead if you follow um, and just keep doing the categories with their statuses. But I'm going to add these just for completion. Uh, the next one is ready for signature e sign um, and Ticket return st ticket status is not closed. Ticket return status is ready for signature e sign. Again, refer to the previous first step um, on setting up the columns appropriately. We're going to go to ID request date. Right there, and ascending. I'm going to create that view. And this one will be the last one that has the exact same column options. Um, so, ready for signature pickup, ticket return status, ticket status. It's not closed. and ticket return status ready for signature pickup. And so this will be the last time that I refer you to the first view we set up and um, not do it in this exact way. So then we have this last request date and we're done with those. The next one is going to be the ready for e-file view, which will have a slightly set up, slightly different setup for the columns that you look at. Um, so I'm going to do ready for e-file, ticket status is not closed, ticket return status is ready for e-file. And the whole point of this change in the columns is you don't need as much of the information now that you did before. So it's still removing satisfaction, removing requester, and removing assignee. And then we're going to add the status after filing option, which has been untouched so far. We're also going to add the certification level just as a quality of life detail. Um, we're going to have the latest update again to track how long something has been updated. And the last one is going to be site. And you will have, <clears throat> you'll come back to this, this uh, part in the video or these columns one more time. Um, and it's when we're going to do the completed return view. Uh, so just check on this step again when you come back here. So we have ascending request date again. Keep that the same and create that view. Um, then we're going to add the completed returns view. This one will look familiar. Ticket status is not closed. I have ticket return status is completed returns. And this will be the same as the last step with the e file view. Uh, to speed things up, I'm not going to reproduce that column again. Um, same request date, sorting change, and create that. The next one will be a little different. Um, we're going to add the do not file option. Uh, 
We have ticket status is not closed. Ticket return status is do not file. And this, this column is gonna be uh, the most depleted. So we're gonna take out the subject, take out the requester, take out the assignee again. We're gonna just add back um, latest update. and site. You can see why I skipped showing you how to do this four separate times. Um, so here you can go back, change request date, ascending, create that view. We're almost done. This will be the last view we create and it'll be the master list and it should just have every ticket, no matter what status it is. So we have ticket status is not closed and no other conditions. Um, and this is kind of where the columns you include is whatever you want to include. Um, you can, you know, you want to keep the subject or move for requester and assignee. You have some liberty, what you want to include on the master list information. Um, call required is pretty useful. Uh, if you want to look at the whole list, you will probably want to include needs more info. Um, and return status and maybe latest update. But this is kind of up to you, your needs, and what you want to be able to track on a large scale pretty quickly. Um, so we're going to just sort those to be closer together. And again, this is something you can keep, keep the ID. It should kind of sort by the request date um, but the request page just keeps track of the total dates. Uh, and so here we're done with all of the views. You can come back. They probably won't. Oh, they do exist. So you can see this is almost exactly what our full Zendesk looks like. And so you can click on the unopened tickets. There's these two. And as soon as you make some changes, for example, this change, those are my initials. Um, and then we're gonna change the status to in progress. And it'll move out of unopened to in progress. And you can see, I didn't make the appropriate column changes for this ticket um, just for the unopened, but these, these columns will all appear on the tickets you fill them out for. Um, that concludes this step of setting up Zendesk. In the next video, I'll discuss how we use triggers and macros to